Hi. So today we are going to have uh, the central uh, lesson uh, regarding the Paolo method because we are going to relate to the sphincters, the, the, um, the pelvic floor uh, sphincters. Uh, we divide it to the front and the back sphincters. So the one that you hold the uh, urination is the front and the anus is the, the rear sphincter. Of course, they are uh, in a way really connected, like this, are really connected, but each one of them has a, a major influence either on the front of the body or on the back of the body. Like when we just uh, started to learn contracting the, the eyes, that will go with the width the front, so with fists, with contraction of the front sphincter. Of course, that will work like this when our body is well tuned, is well in harmony. Uh, and when uh, we are contracting the rear sphincter, you see it is going with like turning the, the arms outside, opening the eyes. So all the back muscles that are doing this turn they are contracting, they are working. So they are kind of the opposites, one of the other, the back and the front. When the back side is contracting, the front has to elongate and vice versa. Uh, so what we want to see is uh, how is it the balance between these two major uh, muscles, the sphincters, the front and the back, is one of them too weak or one of them is too strong and too uh, controlling everything? Like that, that, that could be a lot of time that the rear sphincter will be too strong and uh, kind of uh, taking the control over uh, any, uh, any movement, any action of the muscles. And we would like that to be in a harmony. So let's get to know these uh, sphincters. So right now, you see, you see my eyes contracting, but that was an, uh, a reaction to contraction of the front sphincter. I'm just contracting it. What, what does it mean? It's like, like holding your pee and then releasing. Now, I must say that for some people, the releasing part of the, of the exercise is even more important than the contraction. And to others, really, we need to build up a stronger tone. So to contract and release are both as important. Maybe always give more time to the release because the sphincters are, they have double, um, uh, well, they have to work also when we are asleep, right? So the system that is operating them is not only conscious, it's also in the subconscious. So it's double system. So you have to really let it more time to get to the ah, full release position before we contract again. And that's quite different from what people are used to do in any kind of exercise. Yeah, we just exercise and, act and, and, control and contract and contract again and again. <sighs> let go, release, let it really release, and only then contract again. And then if I do it uh, lying down, uh, the best uh, way to start will be uh, with the knees bent like this. Oh. So I did now just once, and here is the second one. And then I release. You can see on my on my fists when they are contracting. It's when I'm contracting, and then I release. Now, I do it in my own uh, how we call it tempo, my own uh, timing. It's 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 how my body wants to do it. So I I'm not uh, making too much effort on the beginning, unless I want to. And sometimes, especially when I was younger, quite quick, I wanted to do it very, very strong, and that's fine. Because the stronger I'll do it, you see other muscles will come into play, 
and will contract as well. So belly muscles, and the <laughs> neck muscles, a lot of muscles are coming into play. And bringing the knees up is also even, even more a recommended position to start, to start this process because it kind of triggers the body to work on this line of uh, contraction in the front uh, and not on the rear contraction which will look like that. So if you find yourself lifting the pelvis up while doing this contraction it means that the rear sphincter and the buttocks are coming into play too strong. They are controlling, they are overcoming the contraction of the front sphincter. Oh, yeah. And again. Another sign, if you find yourself doing a point <laughs> with your toes, that's also meaning that the rear sphincter is stronger. So you might help yourself to connect this and this together the sides of the big toes and when they are together and they tend to, to compress one into the other while I'm doing the contraction of the front sphincter that really ensures that it's the front sphincter that is working and all the front side of the body which is belly muscles front of the neck <sighs> might be eyes, sometimes will be lips in a way, depending on how your body wants to respond to this. And now you, you heard this, uh, some kind of like the sheen uh, that I was doing as a response to the, as a reaction to the front sphincter contraction. And that's one of the things we want to happen, that, that while we are doing the contraction, the, the sheen, that we learned last time, that the front sphincter will work. And then we'll rest in the, when we open, when we rest, when we breathe in. So you see, I got tired a little bit because, well, I didn't do this for quite a while. And so I change the position immediately. I don't struggle. I just do it how the body wants to do it. So that all the time I'm doing what I do uh, out of joy, out of wanting to do, not of uh, make myself do it effort uh, with effort. No, no effort. It's, it's an effort that is a it's a joy. I like to do it. Here you see these toes went there. That's fine. Because as I said, or as uh, I wrote, um, it's okay that the rear side is working as well. We just don't want it to overcome the front thing. And now you see that the body finds many ways how to do it and many times it's all those other movements that are even more important. Yeah, there is a lot of importance to the tone of the front sphincter, but movement by itself is even more important. And when it triggers my body to do a movement that it needs to do, that is more therapeutic than anything. And yet, uh, yeah, it is... <sighs> and again, you see, I got tired, so my legs went down and I do the contractions. And now I do it quicker. That's how my body wants to do it. A quick contraction and release. So right now I'm not giving it enough time to release and because that's how my body wants to do it. But I note it, so it will come a time that it will take more time for releasing. That's important. 
And look here what happened to my hands. The connection between big, uh, the thumb and the first uh, finger is very typical to front sphincter. It goes together. And it just came by itself. And now you see again the lifting. So that means the rear sphincter is operating more. And that's how it wants to do it now. I allow it. It's fine. I'm still with the, yeah, probably there was a need in my body to some uh, more balance. So that's what it does. It does. And that's fine. I don't stop it. I do it however it wants to do. And it is so interesting. In fact, it's manifest. It's, it's, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, so interesting how the body is taking the path, taking the, journey to to bring myself to balance you will never know how to do it just by your mind it's when you are allowing the body to do it its own way it finds a way so all these moves are a reaction from the trigger that i gave myself contract and release the front sphincter. Ah, you see, there is a lot of freedom. It's not a movement like in uh, physiotherapy or uh, in the working out in the, yeah, it's, uh, it's not pre-planned to do it. That's how it is. Hmm. So you see it is changing how it is doing it all the time and it involves different places in the body. Right now a lot of work in the upper part and the shoulder blades are coming one towards the other and down. At the same time the pelvis is rising up but that's how it happens in my body. I don't know what your body wants to do. And you see that every second it does something else. But uh, if you are forgetting of the trigger, just come back to it. Not uh, in a hurry. Just when you remember, you go back to it. So it, it is still at least in the background of what we allow the body to do. When you are not trained in the beginning, uh, this might be already a lot. So let's uh, let's think that okay, let's see what what really the body wants to do now. We put our hands on the eyes and uh, just give it a lot of freedom, and we'll see what's what's really it wants now without the trigger. Without saying front sphincter or rear sphincter or anything at all, just what does it want to do? It's important, especially uh, after we started a new trigger, because always we will do more <coughs> in the orientation of uh, physiotherapy than what really should be. So this kind of uh, this uh, this is an uh, opportunity to correct it. To really give you freedom. Yeah. Now, I do want to uh, to check also what's happening with the rear sphincter. So for this one, the best position will be uh, with the uh, feet uh, on the mattress. And I'm contracting it now, so it is lifting my pelvis. If you find it difficult to, to feel the contraction in the anus, 
might help to connect the heels together. So while I'm uh, contracting it, I'm also pressing one to the other, the heels one to the other. And this is contracting a lot as well. So contraction of the buttocks is not a contraction of the rear sphincter, but it goes with it. So it's naturally that it will work as well. And then you can spread them apart again and see if you get more of a feeling uh, of that contraction of the rear sphincter. For me, it is so clear in the in the back. In the, it is taking the shoulders as as before, one towards the other and backwards towards the mattress. Yeah, you might do also things like that. Mm. Yeah, my arms need a lot of attention. It's not a surprise uh, as I'm working a lot with my arms and hands. and especially in this direction of opening here. So you see, contraction of the real sphincter leads to opening in the chest. So that's very important as well. And surprisingly enough, you see it goes to the other direction now. It wants to play between the front and the back. And I go with it, I don't hold it. Even though the trigger is still just contract and release the rear sphincter, I allow it to do it however it wants. Because that's the power method. We do not dictate, we allow. Okay. <sighs> and of course, I could take it for my body to the next uh, set, the next uh, exercise, the next trigger. That will be a contraction of the uh, front sphincter and then contraction of the rear sphincter instead of just releasing. Just going from a contraction, one contraction to the other. So that's what I'm doing now. This is a contraction of the rear sphincter for me, right now. That's how it wants to do it. And I go right to the contraction of the front sphincter from there. As you see, it's not related to the breathing. Many people in the beginning are trying to do these contractions by the breathing, by breathing in. No, 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 no. Certainly not in breathing in. Especially not in relation to contraction of front sphincter. So there could be a nice harmony regarding breathing, but we can contract it, you know, we can contract it for hours. So you need to breathe. And, uh, And you will find what is the correct harmony regarding breathing, but uh, yeah, but the ability con to contract is dependless on breathing. Yeah. Now, as you see, it really took this. <laughs> I was talking about breathing, so it took this breathing exercise and just brought this trigger into it. So that's how it does it right now for me. And let me tell you, if it will do this way all the time, that will mean that I'm doing an exercise. I'm doing a physiotherapy. Uh, and because as I found out, the body will 
at a certain point change it. We will not do the same um, coordination of breathing and the contraction of the sphincters all the time. Even though there is something that we can call it the harmony way to do it, there should always be at some point some corrections. And this is how I call it at least. So the body at a certain point will do the opposite. So don't just do the same thing over and over again and think, oh, I'm doing it. No, then you're doing an exercise, not a powder method. <clears throat> Okay, so the last one regarding this, let's see how it will work now uh, in, in, in lying down, yeah, what I'm doing now is a contraction of both, both sphincters, front and back, try to make it uh, the same, as you can see all my fingers went together now, we know that the little uh, finger is related to the rear sphincter and I told you already that the second one is related to front sphincter and when we put them all it takes both and all that is in between <laughs> so everything is contracted and held but as you see, I can speak so I can breathe. I'm holding. Everything is all. It's not so much belly muscles. They are contracting as well. But it's pelvic floor. All pelvic floor is contracted now. And I release it. When pelvic floor is contracting, it is kind of rising up towards the upper part of the body. That's how it, it, it is doing it. Some people are talking about an elevator, like you can come up in a, a few stages, a few stations in the way. So you can do a little bit like now, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. So that became stronger and stronger and stronger, and then it went up as much as it can. I'm still breathing, even though it's strong, and then really didn't go. Now that awakened the pelvic floor a lot and it wants now just to feel itself by contraction and release. That's great. So that's what I allow it to do. It's, it is still the same uh, trigger, contraction of both and release. But quicker, it's kind of more, oh, I want to feel it and release. And of course, we'll end up with the hands on the eyes and free movement. If the pelvic floor still wants to work, it will continue to work. And when you tr work by yourself with this uh, trigger, like with any other trigger, it will be great to allow yourself more time if, if it's okay for your body. Uh, Usually when we teach this, the Paolo method, we are talking about taking half an hour because it takes that time to reorganize itself through the movement. And then take more time. Bring it up to one hour. One hour, you know, one unit. Not divided to many units because it's when it's a, a continuation of, a, of that long time that is when the miracles are starting to happen. That is when the body is really starting to reorganize itself. So I'll end up this here and I'll see you soon with the next one, next session.